five-year period, half the country will have a new address. With the typical U.S. American averaging about 14 addresses over his or her lifetime. And we return to the Ravenstein's Laws of Migration, and we focus in on the first one, that most migrants travel short distances, which relates to the key term, distance decay, which argues that the number of migrants to a destination decreases as the distance they must travel increases. In other words, someone's going to be more likely to migrate from Indianapolis to Chicago than Indianapolis to London, because... Chicago is closer to Indianapolis than uh, London, which is over the Big Pond. Which then can be measured using the gravity model. The gravity model, the goal of it, it's a model which is designed to predict the um, interaction between two cities. Or we could think of that as also as the migration between two cities on the basis of the population sizes of the two cities, but also the distance between them. And this, from a purely math perspective, all this is, is is multiplying the population sizes of two different cities and then dividing that result by the distance between them. And to help, I'll go ahead and use some examples. Now, a fundamental idea with the gravity model is that the bigger the two cities are, they're going to have more interaction with each other than smaller cities. And so it kind of, it doesn't matter regarding distance. New York City and Los Angeles are going to have a whole lot of interaction. Why? Because they're massive populations. They're going to have a whole lot more migration between them, uh, Los Angeles and New York City, than you would see, for example, Indianapolis to New York City, or even Syracuse, New York to New York City. Why? Because those have huge roles in the overall economy, but just they're big for a reason. And so what this argues is, once again, a gravity model. The idea is bigger cities have greater forces that are going to cause attraction to each other. And so what we can do is we can crank out a number and then compare the relationship between different cities. And so in the top left-hand example, New York City uh, with L.A. Uh, and so New York City's population, 20 million. L.A.'s population, over 15 million. Although there's a huge distance between them, you can see the result is the highest number. And so what that means is they have the greatest interaction of all these cities that we're going to look at and compare. Next up, let's look at the bottom left, the yellow one, El Paso and Tucson. Uh, so El Paso and Tucson, relatively close to each other, only 263 miles from each other, but both of them are rather small. And so while they still have a good amount of interaction because of their distance, you can see that number, 8 million, much lower than the result for uh, New York City and L.A. And so the interaction is less there between El Paso and Tucson using the gravity model. Further, we go over the right-hand side, El Paso and L.A. El Paso is in Texas. L.A., of course, in California. And so a little bit of greater distance there between them. But once again, the role of L.A. is because it's huge, especially it's also in the western part of the country. Then that's helped to explain why El Paso and L.A. are going to have a greater interaction. You're going to have more people migrating from El Paso to L.A. than from El Paso to Tucson. And this makes sense. L.A. is a huge force of as far as attracting people to uh, different locations. We can help to explain this and showcase this, both distance decay, but also the idea of big cities interaction, having greater interactions with each other uh, than small cities it, using different maps of, that showcases in-migration, out-migration in different regions. Here we have New York City. And we can see distance decay in action. If you don't know where New York City is, it's just above the H in Philadelphia over on the right-hand side. And so what we can see is we can see more migration patterns, whether it be in, in migration or out migration, more interactions amongst those places closest to it. So you can see distance decay. But nonetheless, you can see a large amount of migration to Miami, large amount of migration to Chicago, large amount, amount of migration to Los Angeles. You don't see people moving to the Great Plains uh, and vice versa. People aren't going from the Great Plains to New York City. And so that's the role of the gravity models. The idea is, is bigger urban areas. You're going to see more urban to urban uh, migration patterns because big cities, they have greater interaction. They have greater uh, amount of migration patterns within each other. But nonetheless, you do see a distance of K as far as short uh, patterns uh, within those places nearest New York City. Same is true for Los Angeles. And so once again, the western coast, you can see distance to K. As you go farther away from the west coast, things change. The patterns change. Uh, but then you definitely see uh, people moving from Los Angeles to, uh, to Miami, to New York, to uh, the urban core uh, there along the eastern coast. Once again, Chicago, distance to K. Miami, distance decay. 
Denver distance decay, but also here in Indianapolis. And so we zoom in to Indianapolis and Marion County. Uh, this is just focusing on the county that Indianapolis is, is located in. And once again, distance decay. You can see how, you know, as you go away from Indiana, you see less in, in or out migration uh, from people coming from those uh, counties farther away from uh, Marion County and God's country here in Indiana. Same is true for Allen County, which is where Fort Wayne is located. Hamilton County, one of the fastest growing counties in this country. Lake County, where Gary's located. You can see the role and power and influence of Chicago. Tippecanoe County, which is where Lafayette is, West Lafayette and Purdue. And even in a very rural county, we see distance decay. Uh, you can see how those neighboring counties have more in and out migration, even for a very rural county, Greene County. 